In this video, see how this huge master bathroom came together. From straightening out the studs to installing the board, installing the tile, installing the mud, installing the floor tile in the shower and on the main floor, installing the heat. See it all. Many, many countless tips. Okay, starting a master bathroom. I just got here, I, I brought up some tools. So I brought up some tools, just a level. Um, some cordless tools. I got my hydro bend board over here. And now I got this shower to do. It's eight feet by four feet. It's gonna be a corner bench over here. It's gonna be a corner bench over there. There's going to be a niche here and a niche here. And uh, two drains. One drain here and one drain there. So I'm going to have to make it so in the middle, when any water gets in the middle, it's going to either go one way or the other because I don't want any pooling in the middle. I want the water to drain completely down. So first thing I'm going to do is check the alignment of these studs and see if I'd have to do any shimming. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Okay, so this stud is sticking out. I'm going to have to shave this one down. <coughs> and this stud here up high is sticking out. I'm going to have to shave that down too. So let's get going with that. Okay. So I'm just going to use a flamer set to the maximum depth. to shave down that stud. Okay, so I got all the studs shaved down. And now I'm good all the way across, except for that one stud that I'm gonna have to shim out. Okay, last piece. Okay, so that's it for me today. I got all the hydro band board up. It's all sealed. It's don't need any banding. The sealer is what creates a waterproof uh, seal at the corners and at the seams. Um, I got the, the curb on. Tomorrow we're going to do the mud. So if you want to know exactly how to do this, I will link to a video in the cards that shows exactly all the details on how to install a hydroband board shower. Okay, so day two, I'm gonna start, well, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna install the dry pack mud floor in the shower. This is it. I got flow effects drains, tar paper, Wire lath, put down the top paper, the wire lath, install the drains, install the mud.
Okay, so I got all the perimeter down for the mud. Uh, I'm gonna show you in just one second so that I can screed from one drain to the middle and from the middle to the other drain and then from the two ends. So the drain, so the perimeter is all completely level and then the center is level except I made it just slightly pitched down towards the center a little bit just a tiny little bit now I'm gonna fill in all the way around and pitch to both drains from the from the center to this drain you know from the edges over here to this drain the same over here from the center to that drain and give it a nice slope so that no water will accumulate in the center it'll either drain to one side or the other Okay, so that's it. This to the drain. Pitch to the drain. Pitch to the drain. All, all the way around. So just gonna clean up a little bit, and that's it for today. Okay, so that's the end of of day two. Uh, it was nine bags of mud. It took a lot longer to do than a typical uh, shower mud floor would take because of, you know everything is double, two drains, two pitches, one to one side in the middle. So it, it took took a lot longer than it typically would take me. Uh, if it was this it was a, a single drain, it probably would have taken me two hours less than what it took me today. Okay, so day three. We're going to waterproof the shower floor. We got the sheet membrane. We have the banding. Where did I put that? Anyway, the inside corners and the banding. So I'm gonna put an inside corner in each of every one of those corners and then put the sheet membrane on the entire thing. Okay, so I pre-cut all the banding so that I, when I mix my thin set, all I have to do is just install it. Now I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna cut my sheet membrane. Okay, so it's all sealed up and waterproof. I have uh, several videos that go right over all these details so I'll link to those in the description or actually I'll link to those in the cards and in the end screen anyway so we got I actually have probably like a six inch overlap over there I have probably like a 10 inch overlap over here and like a six five or six inch overlap over here the minimum overlap is two inches but if you do more it's not gonna hurt so drains all cut out I put a little test plug in both of them put some water in there so tomorrow I can flat test it so if I come back and there's no water in those over there where the, the test plug is that means it's leaking and I'm gonna have to uh, fix the test plug before I actually do the flood test on the shower stall because I don't want to have a leaking plug test and think that it's a leaking shower so anyway I'm ready or a flood test and then ready for time so day four uh, is not going well typical Friday when the they they were boxing in the drains downstairs in the garage for the two drains and the carpenter really screwed me up so I'm making a repair on one of my bonding flanges to fix the problem so day four is gonna be a very short video I'm just going to show you what's going on. So, what happened was, he was boxing in the drain, and after I left, he he pushed up on the the bonding flange, and made made it pucker up. So now I had to cut it out using a, you know, cut out the 
the, the drain using an inside pipe cutter, put a coupler on it, cut out some membrane, and now I'm going to have to reset it, and then I'm going to put a big patch of sheet membrane over this, and then it's going to have to be flood tested tomorrow because it's kind of flood, flood tested today. So I'll show you the end result. Okay, all patched. Let it dry overnight. Tomorrow, flood test. Okay, so this is day five, and as we saw in the last video, the uh, I had to fix that bonding flange. Um, the carpenter screwed up by popping it, and I had to reset it. So I did that, and then I came here and installed some Dietra in this tiny little half bathroom. I put this Dietra down in this tiny little half bathroom, and it's got six by 24 inch plank tile, and I'm gonna be setting that today. So the GC went uh, over there on Sunday to fill the pan with water to flood test it. So when I go there, I don't know what I'm gonna find, if it's still gonna be uh, filled with water or if it's gonna be, or if he goes and, and empties it out and checks the level. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna put this floor down and then I'm gonna head over there and uh, check that out. Okay, quick little floor. All done. The vanity is going to be covering that over there. There was no point tiling over there. We didn't have any extra tile, so just covered what we had to. He'll put, he'll shove it up in the back there and put the um, put the tile in. I mean, put the put the vanity in. So that's the floor. I'm gonna clean up a little bit, and then I'll be off back to that master bathroom. Okay, so made it back to this bathroom but the GC got locked down on Sunday so couldn't flood test so we're flood testing now it's all filled up let it sit for 24 hours mark the level check it tomorrow day six I have grouted this floor here this little floor that I did yesterday this is what I have here it's all grouted. I'm just going to give it a final, final rinse and I'm out of here and I'm going to go set the shower floor in that master bath. Okay, so I'm back on the master bathroom. The flood test was good. I forgot to turn on my camera, but the flood was, test was good. It was still, I don't know if you can see that pencil mark there. It was still at that pencil mark. Uh, it drained okay and I tried it off as best I can. But because it's still so soaking wet, because the membrane, you know, the, the fleece on top is going to soak up a lot of, a lot of water, uh, and I dry it off as best I can. I decide that I'm going to let this dry before I install the tile because I don't want to rush, run the risk of the thin set not sticking to the membrane because it's so wet. So instead, I am going to install the Dietra heat in uh, the main area here. So I'm going to clear, clear up all these tools, clear everything up and put everything in here because this part of the floor is getting all Dietra heat. This part of the, this in here is going to get the same membrane but there's not going to be any heat in here. So I'm going to put everything as much as I can into, into a corner. So that, is there any light in here? Oh wow. So I'm going to, you know, move everything over as much as I can and then clear that entire area and put the membrane down. Uh, I don't have the cable yet, but that's supposed to come in tomorrow. Then tomorrow I'll install that, the, the tile on the shower floor and I'll install the, the cable over here and possibly move some of this stuff around and install the membrane in this area here. Okay, so... I'm getting ready to install my membrane on the main floor. So, actually got two rolls. This is a Dietra heat. So, before you do anything on plywood, you wanna make sure you sweep it and get all the debris off it. Then you're gonna vacuum it. And then just before Spreading your mortar, you're gonna damp sponge it. I'll show you that in a minute. Very important. 
Okay, so I got all the Dietra heat membrane cut in. Between sheets, you want to butt them tight. At the wall, you want to leave a little gap, like a quarter inch or so. Make sure it's not tight. Now this is moving around a little bit because it's not cemented down, it's all loose. But you want to make sure that you leave a gap all the way around because this is going to be heated. Um, where the wire is going to run through, you want to make sure you get the pucks to line up so that so when you run your wire, you don't have to like try and snake it, it'll just run straight across. Where you are not going to have wire, like over here, it doesn't matter if they line up or not. So I am ready to cement this down. So I'm going to be using a modified mortar to cement this Dietra heat membrane to the plywood. Now there are three different types of modified mortar. Uh, the ANSI standards, if you will. So two of them work perfectly fine with installing products on plywood. One of them is not, it, it is a guaranteed failure. So make sure when you're looking for your mortar to install your membrane or whatever to a plywood subfloor that you use either ANSI A118 0.11 or ANSI A118.15. If you if you have a bag of mortar that's ANSI A118.4, that is not rated for plywood and it is a guaranteed failure. So just be careful what you do, because a lot of people know modified unmodified, but uh, there are different kinds of modified mortars. Another thing, if you've got long runs like this is like over 10 feet over here, this way. When you put your membrane down, uh, make it so that you can roll it this way like this. Because if you try, have to, if it's under the cabinet there and you have to roll it the other way, you, you're not gonna be able to because of the, you know, because it, it goes under. So just just a little tip there. Sometimes you can't you can't avoid it for whatever reason, but if you can't avoid it, do it that way so you don't have have to struggle trying to put it back in. Okay, so to install this Dietra heat membrane, I'm going to be using Schluter All Set and Schluter All Set, and just to demonstrate what kind of mortar it is. See, this is an ANSI A118.15T. T stands for thick, thixotropic. But if it meets this standard, then it also meets this standard and this standard. So this standard and this standard are good for plywood. This one here is not. You can use this on cement board, you can use it on concrete, you can use it on uh, even even foam board if you want but if you're going to install something to plywood you need to use one of these this is a lower standard this is a higher standard so so by standard it's you know uh, shear strength and all that kind of stuff so you know bond strength shear strength and tensile strength etc etc so this is easy either this one or this one and uh, the all set is an A118.15 mortar okay so I'm going to be using a Schluter Dietra heat or Dietra XL trowel it's actually just a quarter inch by quarter inch square notch trowel and when you mix some thin set you always want to control your dust. This is the whale tail. This will suck as I as I mix, drop the mortar into the bucket. This will suck the dust up into the vacuum. So you want to control your dust if you mix it inside. The 
Okay, so I got my, my mortar mixed. And while that's slaking, which is actually very important, um, make, always mix your mortar according to the directions on the bag. So this is all set. You mix it for membranes, you mix it from 7.5 to 8.5 quarts of water. And then you mix it for five minutes. You let it slake for 10, 10 minutes, and then you uh, remix it for three minutes. So, and the, actually you'll see it as in the bucket after it's slaked, it, get, it starts to firm up and then you remix it and it gets loose again to the right consistency. Right now, it's kind of kind of really loose, but after it slakes, it starts to firm up. Then when you remix it the, the second time, it becomes a co the correct consistency for, for the membrane. So very important to mix your mortars according to directions. So in the meantime, instead of waiting around for 10 minutes doing nothing, I am going to roll back my membrane and start uh, dampening the plywood and getting ready to set uh, my, you know, spread my mortar and uh, put down my membrane. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. See that? That's that. Okay. Uh, damp and simple. You gotta reset the mix for that consistency. Flat, the flat side of the trail to key in the water and then we used, used the notch side of the trail to gauge out our mortar. Make sure I'm not need to be. Okay, see how our coverage is good? Very good. So I'm going to do the same for the rest of this. Okay, so got all the Dietra heat down. Then I need to get down. But I've got it all installed up to where I need it. There's no heat in here, so but we just we need the same membrane to keep everything the same height. The heat is just in that area there. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna, this will be dry. This will here will be dry so I can install the tile in the shower stall. And then I'll put the wire in the mat. I don't have any wall tile yet. There's gonna be a bench seat over here, a corner bench seat here, and a corner bench seat over there. A niche over here, and a niche over here. I don't have the wall tile, that's why I'm doing the floor tile first just to have something to do. It should be in, in a few days. So anyway, uh, get this done tomorrow and uh, so we'll have another video tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day again. A lot of uh, downtime on this job and half days uh, just because of the way this job's going. Uh, not a big deal, it's a, it's a holiday season. I can use some, some downtime anyway. So this is, this is the flower, shower floor is dry, and this is my tile that's going in the shower floor. This is not, it looks like marble, it is not marble. This is actually a glass, it's a glass tile. So, so when, you inst when you're installing a glass tile, make sure you use the proper thin set. You want a ANSI A118.15 mortar. That's a high polymer content mortar. I had to reset this bonding planch because the plumber popped it from underneath. So I had to put a big patch of membrane around there. So that adds height to this area here. So what that created was a little, I don't know if you can see that, like a space 
which could be like a bird bath if that's not addressed all the way not so much on this side but these three sides here I have that same problem see over there I don't know if you can see it from there. and over here so in that area there I'm just gonna put just a strip just a strip of membrane over here just to take up that when I install the tile so I'm going to do that over there over there and over here this side doesn't need it because the hump is right here okay so I'm um, dry fitting the mosaic tile on the shower floor I pretty much always do that because uh, that way you have everything cut and then you can just cement it in all at once so but something that you probably need to know especially when you got two drains now because this floor slopes like this and then it slopes up like that slopes like that and slopes up like this because that's a high point and it slopes back down etc you know there's a bowl here and there's a bowl here and there's a high spot there so what that happens is the distance from the drain I got the drain covered right there but it's right there the distance from here to here plus the distance from here to here is longer than that distance there because that is level this is sloped so you get a longer distance because there's a curve there so what that means is it's going to be very difficult to get all the corners exactly aligned you can get it so it looks good but sometimes you can't get it perfect just be aware if you when you're doing this kind of stuff especially with with the, it's not so visible with a hexagon tile but with a square tile sometimes uh, you can see it more so you have to make adjustments in the tile so visually it looks straight it looks good but just be aware that it's not going to be perfect because the floor is not flat it's got cumps and dips in it so all the distances across the floor in any direction are not going to be the same okay so just dry laying my tile drains right over here all of the drains so just get it as good as you can so now i'm going to cut that one and i'm going to use my montlet cutter Gonna make some adjustments on these sheets now we'll cut the other one in okay so both drains are cut in time to mix some mortar okay so i'm gonna stick these up in an order, so and i'm gonna put them in order so that i know where they go. Yeah, so I put that in all the way around to compensate for that. Now I'm going to start cementing down my tile. Okay, so the back of these tiles are pretty, pretty flat. So I'm just going to use just a Dietrich trowel. It is 
good? Okay, so that's the shower floor, the two drains. Try to make it balanced. Uh, but, you know, just did the best I, I could. Um, the lines are not perfect and they can't be because as I said before, there's all kinds of, of ups and downs in here. So the grout lines will open and close as you go over uh, the humps and valleys. But anyway, that's the shower floor. Wall tile came in, so I can actually, I'll just cover the floor a little bit and I can start on the wall tile. So now I'm just going to cover the, the whole floor. I put some tape around the perimeter. I'm going to use some cardboard and cover this whole floor so that while, while I'm working on the tile, I don't get the floor damaged or dirty. So I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so I covered the floor, but I left room around the perimeter because I don't want the tile sitting on the tape because then it's going to be a huge pain here to get the tape out. So you leave enough room so when you set your tile, it won't be covering the tape. So that's all, all the way around. And if you have to clean up that little bit, it's uh, quick and easy. Okay, so there's going to be a couple of, of corner seats, floating corner seats in the, in the two corners. So I don't like to just cut the, the stone into the marble and have just the tile support it. I like to have some kind of support underneath so that it's not just the tile holding the stone up. The way I do it, the support holds the weight and then the, the, when I cut the tile around it, it has no pressure on the tile. So I'm making a couple of supports I'm going to show you right now. That's one of them. These go in the corner. Like that. I mean at the right height. And then on the back, see it's carved out. So we have a couple of cleats. So you screw these into the into the wall. You put the sealant on to adhere the cleats to the wall and you put in a couple of screws. The screws are just there to hold it while the, the sealant dries. And then you know you see you put sealant all over the place and you and you basically gluing it on. Once that sealant dries, it's as strong as can be. You can stand on it and it won't fall off. Figure out the height. So these uh, four half inch, if you got, um, if you can get two inch material, that's fine. But these are just four half inch uh, pieces of Cody board cut to, um, to a triangle. And then I cut out an inch for the cleats all the way around. And um, so I'm going to figure out now the the finished height has to be around 17 inches. So the top of the stone from the floor, the finished height has to be around 17 inches. So I have to figure out the, so I'm gonna measure at 17 inches my height, then I'm gonna go down an inch and a quarter for the thickness of the material, and then I'm gonna go down another two inches. The top part of the support is gonna be uh, an inch and a quarter below the 17 inches, and the bottom part is gonna be two inches below that. You'll see in a second. Okay, so. This is my stone. So the top of my seat is gonna go like that. So these cleats here are gonna go on the bottom like this. And then this, this here will sit on the cleats. Let me show you how I do that. Okay, so I've got those cleats on there, then that goes like that. So everything's all, I'm going to put all, all seal it all around everywhere, get it all nice and glued on. So that's what I'm going to do next. I got sealant on here, I got sealant on there. 
and I'm gonna put it on and then I'm gonna put a few screws in I'll show you in a sec okay so I got a screw here screw here screw going down into that cleat you know a couple of screws going into that cleat this is already really solid here now I'm gonna put some sealant all the way around and make, it's all waterproof and make sure it's all waterproof okay so I got a bit of sealant on there Okay, so that's both of them done. Okay, so I got my two supports for my bench seats on. When the stone goes on, it, they're go it's going to be at the finished height of the stone is going to be at 17 inches in both cases. So I got a niche for there and a niche for there. First, I'm going to tie up to it so I can get the um, the bottom part of the niche on a grout line it's going to be 20 inches this is the tile it's a porcelain tile twelve by twenty four and uh, so that's going on the wall on a running bond pattern set myself up ready to install some tile so I set up my snap cutter and my uh, not wet saw but my tile saw because I'm using the IQ saw at waist height so I don't have to bend down to cut stuff here's my IQ saw here's my snap cutter so there's one there's two it's not not um, cemented in yet but I will be doing that in a minute and it's level from one to the other so you want to be level across the front and you want it to be pitched on the sides so that when it gets wet water will run off and not towards the back I'm gonna cement those two in that one and that one got a couple of tiles cut and so I'm going to cut some more tiles. I've got my stations here like I showed you. And I'm going to mix some mortar and get going on this. Okay, so I got my whole bottom row cut. One, two, three, four. And I got my level laser line. So I'm going to put this bottom row in. I'm going to make sure it's perfectly flat. It's perfectly plumb. And then I can build on top of that and know as I go up and I follow the bottom, it's going to be all exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to get this bottom row in first, and then I'm going to put those two corner, corner seats in. And then I'm going to put the next row in, cut around those seats. This is my trowel, half inch U-notch. That's my mortar mixed according to manufacturer specifications and directions got my horseshoe faces got my leveling clips got some wedges ready to go oh, so, okay so i got my first bottom row of tile on and it's perfectly flat and perfectly plumb and perfectly level you always want to make sure you get your first row perfect a lot of people like to use a ledger board and start from the second row and then work up and then put the bottom row in afterwards. I just like to start with the, the bottom row so it's all done and I don't have to come back and, and fool around with uh, fitting stuff in. So, so I don't know if you can see the laser line. The laser line on the bottom of the level. It's perfectly level. It's perfectly, it's perfectly flat, and perfectly plumb. So now I know when I build off that, I am going to just follow perfection. Okay, so I got the first couple of rolls in. Uh, cutting around the bench sheets is not an easy task but uh, I got 
to, they got them done, obviously, because there's no other choice but to do it. That one there is cut in, and that one there is cut in, and I've checked everything. Everything is plumb, flat, and level. So now I'm gonna, you know, I'll just cut that corner in over there, and I'll cut that corner in over there, and then I will continue up. So sometimes people ask, why does it take so long? Well, when you've got bench seats and you've got niches and everything, well, there's a lot of cutting. For example, in this whole wall that I've done so far, there's only three full tiles. One, two, three. The whole bottom had to be cut. Had to cut around that bench seat, top and bottom. Had to cut around that corner seat, top and bottom. That tile's cut, that tile's cut. So there's only three full tiles. One, two, three. Everything else had to be cut. Okay, so I cut the niches in. There's two of them, two 20 inch by 12 inch niches. And I spaced them equally, uh, best I could. They had to fit between studs, so there's not really much um, room for play. Just a little bit left and right. Uh, up and down, it's gonna be a full tile. So from here, to here is going to be a full tile. This is a center line from here to here. It's the same distance as from here to here. And this one I already put in. This one here, I've only got a couple of screws holding it in. I'm going to take it out, put some sealant all the way around, and then screw it in. And then do the same as this one here. You might ask, uh, why have I got a Schluter niche? Uh, I mean, yeah, Schluter niche on a hydroband, Lanacrete hydroband board shower. Well, number one, that's what I could get, and uh, so that's what I'm using. Uh, these days, it's difficult to get anything. Uh, some things that haven't been affected, like water has not been affected, but uh, foam board, big problem getting foam board. So you um, use what you can get. So for anyone that's wondering, this is the sealant that goes in that gun. It's just, you can get these. These are 20, what they call 20 ounce sausages. It's called a sausage. And you just stick that. Kind of hard to do with one hand. Just stick that in there. Then you poke some holes in the top with a utility knife and, and you put the cap back on so you can get if you don't have a sausage gun uh, you can get those that same sealant in the regular caulking gun tube regular 10 ounce tube uh, it's just more economical to get the sausage than it is the you know the, the regular tube plus uh, it's a lot quicker because you can go twice as far with the sausage gun as you would with a 10 ounce tube and you're not changing it all the time. So for anyone wondering, you put a nice big fat bead of seal it all the way around. Then you pop your niche in and then you put another bead. Well, I'll show you. Okay, so I got the both niches in. Now I'm gonna put another bead all along the seam and then spread it out like that. Get some of it squeezed through. Technically, um, Hydroband board does not need washes, and technically, uh, Schluter Curdy board is supposed to have washes, and you're supposed to put a screw every foot. So, because I don't want to use the washes on this, I'm putting a screw every six inches. So, and then plus the sealant between the um, two boards, so that that's bonds bonds them together, so it's not going to move once once it dries. So uh, I'm just going to put another bead of sealant all the way around. So, I know for those people who say, get a tripod, I know, I have a tripod, I have a system, but I'm not doing that right now for one quick little demonstration here. So, let me get the rest of that on. Okay, so I got that on. Now, make sure I fill. And we'll call that done. Okay, so finally got some tile on. Um, 
wasn't very quick today because it was a lot of cutting. As I said before, there's, you know, there was only three full tiles that I put on. Then I had to figure out exactly where to put the niches in, cut the niches out, and cement those in. So now I'm going to let this dry. It's Friday. And come back Monday and keep going with the tile. Okay, so it's uh, Monday morning. I'm back on the job. So Friday when I left, I forgot to put my clips in. So usually what I'll do is I'll put my clips in into the fresh mortar, add a piece of scrap tile, and then just put a couple of wedges in to hold the clips in place so the thin set doesn't push them out. But sometimes uh, you forget. Like I actually didn't even think about it on, on Friday. So what do you do when that happens? What do you do when you forget your clips and the thing you come back and the thin set is hard? Well, that's actually not such a big problem as you might think. You just want to be careful that you don't ruin your waterproofing when you do it. So what I do is I have this, you know, oscillating tool and I put a, a grout blade on there and then I'll just cut out the, the, the thin set, the hard thin set, being careful not to push up against the the board or your membrane or whatever you have and keep it flat up against the tile and away away from the from your membrane if you're going to be doing this on electric floor heat where you got your wiring you want to be very careful i wouldn't advise it uh, because if you cut that wire you're going to be in a huge problem like on this floor here i'm going to have electric floor heat so i'm going to be very careful to make sure that i always get my clips in the day before when I finish for that day so that I have them in for the next day so another thing let me put this down another thing you can do to make it a little bit easier so you don't have to go so deep is you cut your clips down oh, no, not that one so much you cut your clips down so you don't have to go as deep and they sit flat if you you know if, if it's a full size it might not sit properly like see that that doesn't sit properly but if you cut them down a little bit then that will sit right and that will work just as well as a regular clip with a full length um. my clip situation is all set ready to go so I get a lot of comments that say why why do you use so many clips well the recommendation for the number of clips is one on each side of the corner now a lot of people think that that's too much if you're doing uh, a third running bond then you could probably get away get away get away with fewer clips but if you're doing a half running bond like i'm doing a half running bond and if you look at the box and the tiles most of the time, any tile that's a large format tile, that's a tile that has one side longer than 15 inches, they recommend to do no more than a third stagger. And this here, you can see it's a half stagger. So the recommendation for the leveling clips is one on each side of the corner. So, so one here, one here, one here, and one here. Right? So you got these two done for this for over here and then you need one here and one here and because these tiles these are really good quality tiles so there's not a problem you can see it's absolutely flat there's no lippage anywhere if you skip on the number of leveling clips you're going to use you might not get exactly flat like I have here because believe it or not the tile will bend I have a video I'll link to that video in the um, in the cards if I remember so anyway I am going to continue on this bathroom okay so another quick tip now as you know I protected my floor there's a glass tile hexagon floor under this cardboard and I protected it with the cardboard and that'll protect it from all the thin set that drops from the wall, you know, it gets on the floor, anything, you know, dust, etc. etc. It'll protect it from that. But then I have my little platform here 
that has, you know, has the rubber covers on the feet. But you always want to make sure that you're protecting your floor underneath. So right now, I'm just going to have a bucket of thin set on there. But later on, as I go up the wall, I'm going to have to stand on this. So I'm going to put a piece of half inch foam board under the leg. So when I stand on it, you get no pressure on the tile underneath. Uh, even if I didn't have that foam board, it'd probably be okay. But why take a chance? Cut some scraps, put them under there, protect your floor. Okay, so when you're using your leveling clips, uh, depends on what they are. But I, I pretty much, uh, I always use the, the wedge system, like, like this here. So you have to employ a strategy so you don't move your tiles when you're tightening your clips. We've got these clips here, right? And I have them all pointed down. And these ones I have pointed that way. And these ones I have pointed this way. So if you put your clip, if you put your clip so it's pointing up, because these tiles are already set. When I go to tighten that tile, I go to tighten that tile, because I'm pushing up on the wedge, oops, I'm upside down here. Because I'm pushing up on, on the wedge, that wedge is pushing up this way so I could possibly move my tile but because these are already set if I put my wedge this way so if I tighten my wedges down like I'm gonna go this way this way and this way and this way now once I get that all um, cinched down I'm gonna go ahead and do this one and this one because this is not going to move because it's already being locked in place and it's not going to this one's not going to move out because I'm going this way with my wedge same thing on this now on here I forgot because this is a polish tile I use protection plates so let me get these protection plates on and then we'll continue I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean okay so here we go So now that that tile is locked in place, you can't move it. Now I'm going to do this one, and this one. So I'll tighten the rest of those. Okay, so when you're installing high gloss tile, you want to make sure that you don't scratch it with the tools that you're using. Now I'm using this uh, leveling system, this leveling system here. And it's got the wedges. Now, if these wedges were brand new, then like here's, here's one that's in pretty good condition. If these wedges were brand, brand new, then I wouldn't use these protection plates because there's nothing on it to scratch it. It's plastic, so plastic is not going to scratch the balsam. But because I've used them several times, it can be like some thin set on there. And then there's in the thin set, there's sand. So the sand could possibly scratch the possum. So I use these protection plates so when I put the wedge in, it slides on the plastic and not on the tile and you don't scratch your tile. Now with the porcelain, probably be, I would probably be okay, even with the high polish, just using these old wedges. But why take a chance? If this was a, a marble tile or a natural stone tile, which is soft compared to porcelain and very soft then the sand on these wedges would definitely scratch that marble so in that case you would want to definitely use some kind of protection plate these protection plates are the ones that come are made for this system but you can get generic ones so i'll put a link in the in the uh, description for the generic ones and um that you you know you can use those for any type of uh, uh, wedge system if this were uh, just a regular a matte finish and wasn't high gloss then I wouldn't I wouldn't bother with the uh, protection plates if it was a honed stone natural stone then I would use a protection plate anyway regardless of whether it was polished or honed okay so as you're going up your up your wall you always want to have 
it levels handy so you can check to make sure you stay in plumb you stay in flat and you stay in level so as I'm going along as I'm putting them putting the tiles up um, I'm making adjustments to make sure that I'm staying flat I put, my, put this level on here it's all completely flat and it's and it's level six, six foot up. level I put it across there I am completely flat I put it on top so right on the top here right across you can see that I am perfectly perfectly level okay so details matter what's going to separate a good installer from an okay installer is all the little details what do I mean by details so you want to make sure that your lines line up exactly you don't want it to be off not even by a 16 you want them to line up exactly and then in the corners here see how this has got a vein in the corner now I've been trying to make this vein kind of connect but this tile doesn't really lend itself to that but in the corners like this corner here you if you're you know you, you want to make sure all your cuts and knees that need and you got nice nice lines and you could just you know cut the cut a tile and then when you come to this wall you're just gonna another cut a cut another tile for here and then just keep going along but if you want to go to the next level number the pieces that you cut right see that's six right six r that's five l and four l and this one here is six l so this means six the sixth row one two three four five six and this is this piece is what fell off there so when you put this piece of tile up in this corner up in this corner it's gonna look like that tile just folded around the corner because it's the the piece that came off so that's gonna make a big difference instead of having so you, you got this you're gonna have this with that grain following around or you could have something like that I think numbering the pieces and folding those corners so that the grain folds around is gonna make for a much nicer job okay so again today a lot of cutting uh, let me see there's one two full tiles well actually I put these in one two three four five full tiles and everything else is cut and you have to make a precision cut every time because you want the you want the lines to match up exactly you don't want any you don't want one sticking out further than the other I also got the curb on so tomorrow I'll put that last row in up there that's that's all cut so when it's all said and done this whole wall has one two three four five six seven seven full tiles everything else was cut so uh, I also Monday I forgot to put my clips in today I did not forget so what you do is you put in a piece of scrap and then you put your clips in and then you put one you know you put in a piece of scrap and you put your clips in and then you put in a couple of uh, wedges on either side that's so the clips stay in place because as the thin set starts as the thin set dries it tends to to push them away from the tile so just some scrap got all my wedges in ready for tomorrow okay so I forgot about this curb so this way I don't know if you can see that it's level 
front to back it's tilted so the water will run off will run off the curb and into the shower and up back into the bathroom so that's it for today I'm gonna call it quits and tomorrow we'll continue with the tile today today I'm gonna show you something that you probably don't know and it's gonna help you if you're using a leveling system if you have problems with those clips breaking out incorrectly so these ground lines are an eighth of an inch all the way around they're an eighth of an inch so let me get so this is my spacer eighth inch spacer and that goes in there but these clips let's try to get one out I'm not see an eighth of an inch. See how these are actually sixteenth of an inch clips. Are they here? Two millimeter, and these are eighth inch spaces. So you use a smaller clip than your grout line. Typically, I actually like to use um, a one millimeter, a, 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 a um, one thirty second clip, in conjunction with an eighth inch grout line or you can even use a 16 inch if you've got a 30 second inch clip but that way your clip isn't there's room on either side and it's not pinched between the tiles and it'll break out easy every time um, so this this will just break right out without any problem just like that break out clean every time okay so I took out all these clips and they all came out nice and clean except for one because there was a lot of this that, that squeezed through that I couldn't see between under the, you know, the under the protection plate so how do you get this out now this is very important that you do everything you knock out your clips the next day but here's how you get that out very easily so now because it's the next it's the next day the thin set is still very soft so you're going to clean out the thin set around the clip make sure you get it nice get all the thin set out free up the clip and not scratching the tile Then just gonna get the back of your mouth. Just give it a tap and it will come out. And then you can go the other way if you have to. And that came right out. Okay, so got the two rows in, got the bull nose in on this bottom side here got the top row in up there and again very time consuming those all had to be cut and uh, there's one full tile right there everything else has to be cut okay so I decided to get the tile under the niche there I mean under the you know, finish this seat here. I don't have to worry about it. So this is a piece of tile right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's a piece of tile. And then I have this one for the front. This guy that's mitered both sides. And that's going to go like that. So I cement that on and that's going to be finished. Okay, so that's on. This corner bench sheet is done. Just the foam board just to 
So this won't sag. Otherwise than that, that's done. It's a little chip here. I think I'm gonna turn that upside down. Okay, so the chip is gone. I just turned it upside down. And now the chip is up here. And you're never gonna see it up there because it's gonna be caulked. So that is that. Okay, so I set this and this. And the reason I do that is so when I put the tile, you know, the rest of the tile on plus the, the shelf, this will be solid and the weight won't push it down because the thin set, if the thin set is still fresh, you could push it, it could push it down. And I have this, both of these, a level that way and they're tilted that way same with this one here so water will run into the shower and not into the back so I usually start about 7 30 8 o'clock I get on the job and then I usually quit about 2 o'clock. might say that's early. It is early, uh, but I can do that, and that's what I do. And then I go home, and then I do a bunch of other stuff that I have to do for YouTube and for, um, you know, related to the to, to my tile business, et cetera, et cetera. So my, my installations might end at 2 o'clock, but my day does not. Okay, so another little... Um, piece of information to make sure that your installation is better than the average installation is to make sure you stone or you sand or you smooth all your cuts that are going to be seen. Let me explain. So all these, so this is obviously a factory edge and this is a cut edge but it's all, it's actually pretty nice because I stoned that edge. I sanded that edge to make sure that it's not sharp at all. I run my finger along and it doesn't get cut. These edges here, those aren't stoned because there's going to be a piece of tile in front of it. You're not going to see it. So this is a cut tile, whether it be with a wet saw or with a snap cutter. This one here was actually done with a with the snap cutter and see how this edge is really really ragged and very very sharp you can cut yourself on that so before if this was going to be an edge that was going to be seen then you would stone it this is what you call a rubbing stone or where you can get the soft diamond pads uh different grits uh, i actually had one of those and i really like it but i i lost it so i gotta order some more but in the meantime i still have my rubbing stone so this is what the edge looks like before you stone it before you sand it and then I'll, I'll sand this off just like this I need two hands to do that but I'll just sand it off smooth it off and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done okay so I smoothed it off it's hard to see in the picture but I stone that so you got a nice smooth clean edge so one of the main things about installing tile is the layout very first thing you do before any tile goes on the wall after all your prep is done obviously before you set a tile you want to do a layout so you know what every piece is going to be before you start and sometimes the layout you want isn't the layout you can get let me just uh, illustrate what i mean here so as you can see i got one two three full tiles and then i got a cut tile and a cut tile so this tile here is not a full tile and we used the piece that i'm going to use a piece that falls off to start over here so i'm going to have a small piece over here so you might ask why don't i just start with a full tile so i can get a get a get a nicer nicer pattern well, because the distance from here, from there, that corner, to that corner there, to where that 
that will know this would actually end up giving me is, is more than two full tiles. So if I started with a full tile in the corner, I would end up with like an inch piece over here by the bullnose. So to get rid of that piece, we opted to just fold the corners and you know do like I said, so you get the pattern that follows around and every other piece is gonna be like that smaller piece over there. It's not too, too bad, but that's what's gonna, that's, so that's why we did it this way to avoid getting the little sliver over here by the bull nose. Okay, so I got my scraps on, I got my clips in, ready for tomorrow. And let's call it a day. Okay, back again. And I cleaned up all the tile that was that's been installed already. So this is this is all cleaned up. I cleaned it all up and I pre-cut this top row here and this is why it's very important that your walls be perfectly flat and perfectly plumb. That way see here, also here. All perfectly flat. That way you can pre-cut your tiles. These are all the same size. That's for this corner here. And the smaller ones are for this corner here. So they're all pre-cut so that they all I don't have to worry about trying to figure out what they are. I can just start in the corner and go. And then these ones here, when you get here, it's very important that this corner be 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 very be plump as well. So I had I had the plaster install this corner bead and I gave him a piece of the hydroband board so that he could put that in and that wouldn't slow me down putting in my the board when I when I got here. So that's perfectly plumb. That's perfectly plumb. So all the tiles on this side are gonna be all the same, obviously alternating, and same over here. That tile is exactly the same size as the tile on the bottom. Okay, so I gotta mark this hole to cut it. So the easiest way to mark it is extend your lines up and down. You can use a square, speed square for the vertical lines, and use a level for the horizontal lines. Now, when you have to mark your tile, you can just put it anywhere that's convenient to get your lines in the same up and down. So now, I, and then you got your square. Now I'm gonna make a circle out of that and then we're gonna cut it. Use whatever's convenient. So I'll take that outside and use my grinder to cut that. Okay, so there it is. These aren't cemented in yet. I'm gonna cut that piece. Then I'll make some mortar, cement those on, continue up the wall. Okay, so when you're cutting holes in, in tile for the discussions, you know, for the mixing valves and for the shower heads, etc., you want to make sure that the discussion will cover that hole. So you don't want to cut it too big, but you don't want to cut it too small. I got all these cut. So that's a little off, but it'll get it'll get covered by by the discussion. That one's good. That one's good. So just wanted to show you. And then this one here, I cut with a grinder with a dry cutting blade. And these ones here I cut with a 
whole saw. So you can get them individually, or you can get them in a kit. So I have both. Uh, these kits are more expensive. Individually, they're a little bit cheaper, but these are much better quality than those. But they both do the job. A lot, a lot, a lot of cutting. This time, holes and slivers. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, I got one of the niches done. So, this is it's a hole here, a hole here, a hole here. Let's see how many full pieces we got on there. We got two full pieces on there. That one and that one. Everything else either has either a hole in it or it has, or it had to be cut. So that took a while to do just because of the holes. And this here, so yesterday I put the bottom on. So if you look at that, what we have, these are the pieces that came out of the tile. So this piece here was what fell off this tile. This piece here and this piece here is what came off that tile and this piece here is what came off this tile here so that grain but when you step back and you look at it that grain follows through as if the tile was just cut and pushed back and those are the pieces that I saved those ones down there for for this niche here So I'm going to call it a day again and uh, be back tomorrow and I'll finish, I'll finish that wall, get this started and possibly do this niche here. This took a long time to do this niche because you have to get, you know, you want everything to be nice and even and exactly where it's supposed to be. I'll make a little bit of film more adjustments before I go, but anyway. That's that niche. Okay, so I actually counted how many cuts there are in this shower so far, and, and I'm not, not even done yet. This is why it's taken so long. So in the niche, that one niche, that one niche, there are 17 pieces. So that one's gonna be 17 pieces as well. If you add up all the cuts, everywhere so far there are 75 cuts that includes the niche, that includes the niche and over here so full tiles in this entire bathroom we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven there are eleven full tiles in this entire bathroom everything else is cut so one of what's one of the secrets of getting a professional looking tile job so you want to have straight level lines you want all your grout lines to line up you want your corners to be precise you want your cuts to be precise everywhere you want your holes to be clean. You want to have, you want to be square. You want to be level and you want to be plumb. So if you get all the details, everything will fall into place. Another one that a lot of people miss is the corners. You want your grout lines to line up exactly in the corners. You don't want them, you know, one up and down. If you like a tiny little hair off, when you cork it, it'll, uh, it'll hide it. But you want it to be perfect, as perfect as you can get those corners every time. Even here, if you put a laser through here, again, right, this, this line goes straight through. This line, go straight through Get all the details right and your job will be at the next level so I've been saying there's a lot of cuts on this this um, 
the shell I'm like 75 so far and I just did another four so anyway you might wonder I, I showed what I was using but I think I may be a good idea to go in depth a little more uh, exactly what I'm using to cut most of the, the tile so as you can see I don't know if you can see it in the in the um, video so well but these are nice clean cuts of course I, I stoned them but they're all very clean clean cuts so all the straight cuts like on the bottom and these cuts here they were all done on my montelet this is the kind of cut you can get on a montelet it's like an inch piece there are some smaller ones so here this one here that's another one I cut on the montelet and this is my IQ saw this is a dry cutting saw there is no water in the saw it's all done by so IQ 228 cyclone it's all done it's got a vacuum system it's got a, it's got a tray in it to collect the dust I, I empty it out every morning so this is what I've been using for this entire shell including cutting that cutting the stone on the on the niche okay so this on a shelf is on an angle. I don't know if you can see that. It's this this would be level. So it's like about a quarter inch per foot. So I need to cut this piece of tile to fit around here. But this has to be level and this has to be tilted. So I have to mark that tile somehow. So one way of doing it obviously is put a level line and then you can get your tile this isn't actually the tile because I already cut it so you get your tile this goes over here and then you have to turn it around and then you have to see where your line is and see where your line is and mark it and that's one way of doing it but here is where the laser level will help you out so here's my, my laser line. So I know this piece is cut here. This is not actually the piece because I already cut cut the piece, but I'm just showing you. So I need to cut this. This piece has to go down here. So how do you do that? Just get your tile, put it in place, turn it upside down, mark your tile. One here, one here, right? Then go to your saw where you cut a cut your tile, and then I have obviously left a little bit of room for the cork. And there's your tile, perfect fit. Okay, so it's ten. 46 can you read that 10 46 well actually just turned 47 so for anyone that's wondering what the time frame is on this let me uh, give you an idea of what I've done I got here at 8 o'clock and this is what I've done let me show you so as you see it now right I've got this done so far. Doesn't look like I did much. Okay, so let's just go over exactly what I did. So the first thing I did when I got here, I knocked all these clips out from the second row all the way to the top. I cleaned up this niche, took out all, all, the, all the wedges and all the tape and everything. I scraped out any thin set that might, might have been being in between the joists to get it clean because you want to make sure you do that the next day when it's still relatively soft. 
I figured out what my pieces are here and I cleaned up the edges on any of these tiles, these tiles here, so that they're all exactly the same size. Those are the same size, those sh sh short ones and these ones, if there was any differential. These actually here, the, the bigger ones were exactly the same. Those were about an eighth of an inch different, so I made them exactly the same size. So when I put them in the corner, see that one there where that, at the very bottom there, where that grain comes around, like over here, where the grain comes around, right? I cut, cut and fit all these these pieces here that are under here. I got them exactly plumb and even and flat. And I made two shorts and I also recorded several segments for the video today. So it took me about two, two and three quarter hours, two hours and 45 minutes to do all that. Plus I went down and got my mortar out of the truck. I got some water in my buckets. I mixed the thin set and I did all that. So I don't know I, if that's fast or if that's slow, but that's what I have accomplished in two hours and 45 minutes. Closer look. Flat. Flat. Nice neat corners. So if you're gonna do the work, you have to have the tools. And the tools you get are gonna determine how easy the job's gonna be. I prefer to get high quality tools so that they last and they do the job they're designed to do. Now, as far as cutting holes in tile, I love my hole saws, but the problem with hole saws is you need a million different ones to have the right size for every job. So let me just illustrate. I have this kit. I have this big one. I have another fairly large one. I have another one, which is slightly bigger than this one. But, and then I have a, a bunch of different ones in the truck also. But the one thing I don't have is the size here. That's too big. That's too small. So I could go get another one. But these are the com this is a common size now, so I could probably just buy one of these. But this used to be a very common size. Haven't used this in quite some time now. So if you don't have the right hole socket for this hole, so the next option is a grinder with a dry cutting blade. For the hole for the bigger holes. This will always be the right size. So I put this here because if that guy gets caught, it's gonna, it's gonna twist this way. That way your thigh catches it and you don't, you don't twist your, your wrist. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. That's one.
Okay, so it's Monday morning. Um, I'm back on the job here, and I cemented these three tiles in. I mean, these two rows of tiles in. I had cut these and had just left them there on the on the Thursday because I didn't work Friday. So now I got these cemented in. Now I'm gonna do up here and do up here. And then the only thing left I'll have is the niche under the bench seat and on the outside of the curb on, I mean on the inside of the curb. On the outside of the curb, this GC likes to put a piece of Azac, that's that plastic trim, which looks like baseboard so that the baseboard will run all the way around the room without interruption. And that's perfectly fine. Not a problem with that. So now I'm gonna, Mix some more mortar and probably keep going up this way. I got one extra row over here. That leaves me two rows up there and three rows over here. So I'm gonna mix some mortar. I already got this top row cut. These are my pieces down here. So now I'm gonna just keep on going up. I got that wall done. Now I'm gonna move on to those you know those two rows there, those two top rows, and then the niche and you know, the corner seat. So these snap cutters have a big time for them because I got to cut up about three quarters of an inch of this off this tile. So just gonna line it up. Okay, so all the wall tile is done. Tomorrow I'll get the niche under the bench and under the under the curb over there. Won't take long. And then we'll clean everything up. So here's a little uh, bullnose hack so you don't have to mite of those corners. You don't have to mite of these corners here. If you get if you cut your bullnose square and then you put it on like that, it, it doesn't look good. It looks ugly because you got this big, big gap here. Instead, cut it a little, little ear. So when you put it on, it looks much cleaner and it looks like it's mited, but it's not. Okay, so it's the next day again, and uh, I showed up, I knocked out all the clips, and I cleaned up everything, like the grout lines and any thin set that was on the tile, got it nice and clean. It's all nice and clean, nice and shiny, nice and shiny. The, um, the only thing I have left is under the bench seat and under the curb. The two, this, I, I finished this other niche, Got that all done, and uh, so I'm gonna work on this bench seat next, and then I'm gonna do under the curb. Okay, so the niche is done, both niches are done. That seat is done. That seat was done before I, th I did that today. I did under the curb, it's all done. So all the wall, all the tile, in this shower is all done. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit. Maybe I'll pull up this cardboard and we'll take a look at it when it's all cleaned up. Okay, so the shower is all done. It just needs grout. And I cleaned it all up, but I still need to do the main floor, which I'll be starting tomorrow. So here it is here. All done. Cleaned up. 
Remember the two drains? Haven't seen those in a while. Two sets of mixing bowls. Two niches. Two corner seats. All done. Finished. Okay, so these drains come with temporary drains. And this is going to be the actual drain that I'll pop in there. And there, I get two of them once uh, I grab the floor. Okay, so I'm getting ready to install the wire on the floor. Uh, this is a Dietra heat uh, heating system, floor heat system, uh, but pretty much they're all more or less the same. So in this system, you, you have three components. So you got the thermostat, the wire, and the mat. So this goes with the instructions and the warranty card and you need to test this three times before while you install it. So first time you test it is when you take it out of the box. Second time you test test it is when you put it in the mat. And third time you test it is after you've inst installed the tile. So this is the 240, 240 volts. And I'm gonna put this in the two, three configuration. So I'm not gonna go over all the details on how to install this mat. I'll link to a video that has very explicit instructions on how to test it and how to install it. So I'll link to that video. So I'm just, you know, showing you what I'm doing today. Okay, so got the wire down. Two, three configuration all the way to where it comes to about two pucks after the wire there's no heat going in there so this was actually the perfect size I mean couldn't have even gotten any closer <coughs> so now I'm gonna put the two sensors in and then test again. Okay, so we got the sensors in. Snaked it all the way over here. There's no snake to bring up the wall. We'll do that later. And this is, a, like I said, it's a 3-2 configuration. I tested it twice. Now I'll start installing the tile. And once the tile is done, I'll test it the third time. Okay, so now, now I got the floor heat down. It's time to install the tile. Now on this, on this floor, I've got a big eight inch by 40 in, 48 inch plank tile right here. Eight by 48. Now to help with the layout, this is actually a pretty simple layout. To help with the layout, you can use a story pole so these lines uh, spaced at the distance of tiles including the ground line so you can just use this just move it along and put a mark where a full tile would be and then you can Flip it around, put your tile on a mark, and then you can see what piece you're going to get at the door or over there. Anyway, this is just going to help for, for your layout. Plus, this way here, it, it is also the length of a tile, which will help you figure out the distance from one wall to the other without having to pick up or measuring a tile. Okay, so here's a piece of information for heated floors electric floor heat when you're installing the electric floor heat i mean you're installing the tile on your electric floor heat you don't want to use lightweight mortars that would include like x77 um tri light ultra light from ape or uh, pro light any any of those mortars which are called lightweight mortars you don't want to use those because 
Um, the heat of flaws, they like mass and you'll lose efficiency if you use a lightweight mortar. You want to use a regular sanded mortar uh, like on this one here. So for the walls, I used ultralight by Mape and for the floor, I'm using all set. You don't want to use the lightweight mortar on a heated floor. You always want to use the regular 50 pound bag mortars. Okay, so I got some some floor tile down, but I'm, I'm really cramped in here with all the stuff that's in here, so I'm just gonna stop. I'm gonna clean up, get, to get rid of some of the junk, move stuff around so I have some room, room to work. So let me show you what's going on. From here to here, this is all, all done over here, these these three rows and then this last fourth row these other ones it's just placeholders to hold the clips in place and i'm working myself into a corner here so i gotta get rid of some of these bags here i move some stuff over to the shower i got my workstations here but i gotta get i gotta move that door i gotta move that that toilet there's another door behind there i gotta get rid of some of this junk so that i can keep going and put some more detra down it's just nowhere else to put it. Can't put it in the bedroom. So this is what I'm, I'm taking care of. So I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff and then tomorrow we'll continue with the tile. Okay, so I'm back and uh, I knocked out the clips out of the floor. I, I didn't get that much done yesterday because I had to clean up and make some room. It's just, this is driving me crazy here with all the stuff that's in this room and I can't put it anywhere else. So I have to move stuff around. But anyway, let me show you what I, I got done. <clears throat> so yesterday I put in the wire and I cleaned out all the crap that was all around, all the garbage. I moved stuff around. I set up my, my stations and I got this tiled out. I wanted to go further, but I was just working myself into a corner over here. So this morning, I knocked out all the clips, I cleaned it up. I figured out, because I have to get the Dietra down, the Dietra heat mat in that room there, but I need to make room first. So what I decided to do is I'm gonna come back these three rows as far as I can over to here, fill all this in, go back this way as far as I can. That way, tomorrow, I can get this stuff out of here because this is really killing me here. I can get this stuff out of here, put it on top of the tile, and then I can put my Dietra heat mat down and then continue these rows through here. It's just, it's just, it's just driving me, me nuts. I don't know why they brought these doors up. The, I mean, they should have left them in the garage, but I can't take them down by myself and uh, there's actually no room in the garage because we've got three cars in the garage. So anyway, this is what I have to deal with. So I am going to just keep tiling over here. See all the stuff that I put in here. Hey, those two boxes, I really didn't need those two boxes in here either. But anyway, Let's keep going. Okay, so this is what I got done. I got done, that done over there. I got all this done over here. I can't go any further in that way because I need to get the Dietra heat down. But first, before I get the Dietra heat down, I need to get all that stuff out of there. And I can't get all that stuff out of there until this tile is set. So this is as far as I can go today because I'm, I'm in a corner here. I got no room to, to work here. It was hard enough getting this in. Uh, so I can't go any further. So I guess that's it. It's around lunchtime, around 12 o'clock. And I'm going to have to go home now because I can't do anything else. So another one of those days. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, I cleaned up all the clips. I knocked out all the clips. I cleaned up the floor. Get all the 
floor cleaned up and all the clips knocked out. Oops, but I have to wash a little bit better. There's another one there. But anyway, so now I'm going to take all this stuff out of here <laughs> and put it in here. And then when it's time to grow out, I'm going to have to move it again. So it's a pain here. But anyway, so let's see if I can get this tetra heat mat down here today. And I'm going to call it quits. It's um, December 31st. Great. Once I get that mat down and I am out of here. Okay, so finally got this room cleared out. <laughs> and now this one is crammed with stuff. So what I'm going to have to do here is, because there's a lot of, you know, the toilet, the doors and everything are in the, in the shower. Once I get this floor finished, I will clear out all my tools. So I get rid of all my tools, like that table and the cutter and the, and the, and the, and the, and the dry cutter there. And, you know, most of my other tools. And, and then I'll, crowd the floor, then I'll have to cover the floor because I'm gonna have to move everything out of the shower and then grout the shower. So usually I like to grout the shower first so get it done, but this time it's gonna have to be the other way around. Okay, so I got all the Dietrich heat down, finally. Now the kid gives me plenty of room to work on, this is where where it, where it ended, right here on this line here. That's as far as I could go. Now I got all that stuff out of here, over there. I can finally finish this room. You know, but I'm not gonna be able to go do that much because I can only go so far, because this, this is the only way out. I can only go so far and then I'm trapped. I can't go any further. So I'll go this way some, that way some, then I'll finish in there and where the toilet is. And then when I come back, I'll keep going on these two areas here. Okay, so it's Monday morning. I'm back in the job. And I just laid out a few tiles to continue on to this, into this room here. And with the tile in there, a laser level really helps I don't know if you can see the line down there on the wall. So I know I'm completely straight. So knowing that I'm completely straight, I can put some lines down now. So these lines will now be my reference when I start cementing down and I can put the laser away, I'm not gonna need any more. So I'm gonna make some tin set, cut some tiling and get going. So I've been complaining about the room I have in this bathroom all this time because everything's so crowded. But there's another important rule about room, room for movement. Anytime you're installing tile, always leave room for movement. Never cut tight to the wall. Always leave perimeter expansion, room for movement. Now the, these ones, these tiles here aren't cemented down, they're just cut in. So, but I left room all the way around so the tile can move. This is actually, these are cemented down. There's room over there, it's about a quarter inch. And under the radiator, I don't know if you can see it, there's room under the radiator. And I will leave room over here. And anywhere the tile meets an immovable object. So don't forget to leave room for the tile to move. So that's not just the tile. The tile will move a little bit because it, it does. And like anything else, it's susceptible to heat. It doesn't move a, a lot, but if you consider a 64th of an inch over 20 feet, how much does that add up to? 
And if, the, if there's nowhere for the tile to expand, the one thing it's going to do is go up. And if you're wondering whether that's true or not, go on YouTube, type in tenting tile, and look at the results. All those results of tiles popping and tenting is because no room for movement was left. So don't forget, leave room for movement. If you want to know what the exact rule is, go online, look up ANSI EJ171. Okay, so I got all this down. down. I just got to add one piece here. That's, I've already got that cut right there. Just gonna put that one piece in. Then I'm gonna put some tiles in to just hold the clips in place. And I'm gonna move over to over here. Finish this over here. And then maybe add another, another row over here, or a couple of rows over here. Okay, so I got a, a fair bit done, but I'm kinda of like, work myself in the corners again. So um, this is as far as I can go for today, but I got a good chunk of it done. So here we go. This area over here done. I got another row of tile down here. And I got all this done. Then I was kind of in a corner and I didn't want to have to walk on the tile, keep on walking on the tile. So I stopped over there. That's as far as I can step. So tomorrow I'll probably get most of whatever's left done because I've only got this area over here, this and this over here. Um, I'm not going to be able to go all the way down there, probably get a, like another two or three rows and then, but I'll be able to get all this rest of this done. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Okay, so I'm back. I um, cleaned everything up, moved stuff around again uh, to make room so that I can work a little bit more comfortably. So I got it all cleaned up, so I figured I'd let you see what it looks like uh, all cleaned up. So this is what I got left to do, this, that, and that. That's all I got left. And this is the floor and that's all done over there as well so now I'm gonna set up my uh, you know uh, saw and my snap cutter in a more convenient position so that it doesn't get in my way like it was getting in my way before. Okay, so I'm at, uh, as far as I can go, I got, um, I just got two little areas to do, and let me show you. So I just got like a couple tiles here to do, over here, because the GC needs to fix this jam, he's gonna come tomorrow morning and take care of that, so I couldn't put those couple tiles in. Over there, I went as far as I could reach because I just can't go any further without working on top of the tile. So I didn't want to work on top of the tile. This area is all done. That's all done. So a few hours tomorrow, a couple of hours tomorrow, I'll get this all, all finished. And that'll be it. Okay, so back. Today I'm going to finish this floor finally, so now I can reach and finish that. The GC came, fixed the door, I'm going to put a Schluter metal at the end of the tile to protect the edge when we turn the rug. And so I'm just going to cut these few pieces in, cement that down, and then I get as much crap out of here as I can. Okay, so when you're transitioning from tile to carpet, you always want to protect the edge, especially when you got a, a carpet guy or some other someone else coming in to tuck the carpet. I'm going to do this one myself, so it's not a not a big deal. But if they ever decide to change 
the carpet in this room, you want the tile edge to be protected. So I like to use a sheet of metal. It, there's a bunch of different manufacturers that make very similar um, edges. So the leg goes under the tile and that way when you tack in the carpet it'll look nice and clean and you won't chip your tile so you want the top of that edge to be flush with the tile so this tile here is three eighths of an inch but my edge my metal is a half inch and the reason you do that is because you're going to have to it under there and you're going to struggle to try and keep that the top of the tile even with the top of the edge because you've got thin set and it's going to build it up so if you get on these large format tiles if you get a half inch metal instead of the 3 8 inch which matches the tile exactly you're going to be much more easily able to get that edge to be exactly right if, it, if it's smaller tiles then no use the right size the same size as a tile but for, for larger format tiles where you have a thick notch trowel underneath you want to use a metal that's slightly deeper than the tile so for anyone wondering this is okay so I got it all cut in there's nothing these these two rows aren't cemented down those last four rows aren't cemented down but I got it all cut in and I'm gonna make some inset and finish this job up and then clean up this entire area so I, so tomorrow I can grab the floor I did this whole floor with this cutter the Montelit and the IQ 228 cyclone the whole thing okay so tile is all done all finished I'm just gonna pull out these horseshoe spaces and pack up some of these tools to make room okay so tiles all down and i cleaned up a little bit uh, so tomorrow i'm gonna grout the floor first and then i'm gonna move everything out of the shower and then grab the shower i cleaned i'll take this down tomorrow because i don't have room in my truck to put this in right now so this is the floor all the stuff in the in the shower so tomorrow I'll clear all this out now I'm gonna take all this trash out of here and tomorrow I'll, I'll knock out the remaining clips that I did today so this whole floor will be clear and I'll be able to grout it and then move on to the shower and finish that this is gonna be the last day I'm grouting and caulking. So I cleaned up the entire floor and it's ready for grout. This is the floor. All cleaned up. I'm gonna show you this in a second. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Scraped out all the grout lines where it was thin set sticking up. I cleaned up any thin set that was on the tile. There might be a few spots left over, like here and there. But I'll get that one and grouting. And in here, there's no heat wire, so you don't have to worry about going too deep. In here, where the heat wire is, when you're cleaning the grout lines, make sure you don't go too deep and cut the wire. So you got to be very careful when there's heating wires. So when you've got a larger floor, um, make your life easy. Get a grounding system. It's uh, much more efficient 
and it actually works really well. The one I have, this one here by Ruby, and it consists of a sponge and rollers to, to wring out your sponge and the sponge is actually cut into squares to pick up the grout and this works really well it really does a nice job and it's a lot easier and a lot quicker and more efficient than you just using a sponge and because it stays flat on the floor because it stays flat on the floor gives you nice clean lines whereas this one here when you when you're you know you it's not always flat and you get corners that might dig in so employ one of these systems here I'll put a link in the description in the uh, in the description okay so it's all grouted wash twice it's a little wet in here this is the second wash in here so now I'm gonna clear all this stuff in here and grab the shower okay so floors all grouted and I moved everything out of the shower. Now I'm getting ready to move to ground the shower stall. I got everything out of there. I put the toilet over there. I can put it near where it goes. And I put leftover tile over here. And I put the, the doors over here and still leaves. And I got buckets and vacuum. And I got some stuff in here. But anyway, so it's getting there now I'm gonna mix the grout and first I'm gonna grout the top and that way I can get this thing out of here and then we'll go down to the bottom okay so it's all done grouted caulked put the drain grates in So yeah, that was a that was a, it took me a long time to get this one done with all the delays and all the problems that I had with stuff in the way. It's done now. On to the next one.